Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this. Welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to be continuing our conversation on unit two of AP Psychology. We've talked about the endocrine system, we've talked about the nervous system and neurons, and today we continue this conversation with unit two, topic five, influences of drugs on neural firing. Remember from our last video, a neuron only fires if there's a strong enough stimulus to cause an action potential. This sends an electrical signal through the axon down to the axon terminal, where neurotransmitters are located in the synaptic vesicles and are released from the axon terminals and then bind to the receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. Now, that was a really quick overview of a neuron and an action potential. If you need a better refresher, make sure you go back and watch the previous video. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Plus, it makes sure you don't miss out on any of my topic review videos. All right, so in this video, we're gonna be focusing on what happens to the neurons and their ability to send and receive messages when you take certain drugs. Some drugs impact the synapse in a way that increases the effectiveness of a neurotransmitter. These are known as agonists. These substances increase the effectiveness by binding to the receptors that are made for the neurotransmitters that it is mimicking, increasing the production of that neurotransmitter or blocking the reuptake that would normally absorb the extra neurotransmitter, making them more available. Essentially, these substances mimic the neurotransmitter to enhance the effect of the original neurotransmitter. Remember from our last video that there are different types of neurotransmitters and they impact the neuron in different ways. When remembering agonists, think of a copycat or a mimic. Examples of agonist substances would be anti-anxiety medications such as Xanax. This causes an increase in brain neurotransmitters called GABA, which help decrease neural activity and calm people down. Other agonistic drugs such as Prozac are used to treat depression and work by delaying the reuptake of neurotransmitter serotonin, making it more available for your body to use. Remember, reuptake is the process of the presynaptic neuron reabsorbing neurotransmitters that have been released into the synapse and were bound to a synaptic receptor site. Some drugs will act as a reuptake inhibitor. That means they block neurotransmitters from being absorbed back into the presynaptic axon terminal. This is really important because it regulates the amount of neurotransmitters that are present in the synapse, therefore controlling how long the signal from the neurotransmitter will last. Another example of an agonist substance would be opioid drugs. They mimic endorphins, which are the body's natural painkillers. However, opioids create a much stronger signal than our natural endorphins. This creates a feeling of euphoria, which is why they are highly addictive. They make our body feel good and want more of the drug, something our body cannot produce on its own. However, not all drugs enhance the effect of neurotransmitters. Some drugs called antagonists end up decreasing the effectiveness of neurotransmission. Antagonists can work in multiple ways, either by blocking the neurotransmitter from being released from the presynaptic axon terminal, or by connecting to the postsynaptic receptor and blocking the intended neurotransmitter from binding there. This reduces the effects from the neurotransmitter that is being blocked or prevents any effect at all from occurring. An example of this would be medication for schizophrenia, which blocks dopamine receptors. Another example would be alcohol. Alcohol blocks the release of glutamate, which acts as a depressant for our nervous system. And just like that, we're done with another topic review video. Now, you know the drill. Answer the questions on the screen and check your answers in the comment section below. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and drop a like on the video. It's free and it lets me know that you want more AP Psychology content. And speaking of AP Psychology content, if you need more help with your AP Psychology class, check out the ultimate review packet. You can find a link for it in the description below. It has information on all the units for AP Psych and it'll definitely help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. All right, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you online.